I'm staring down the barrel of 64 years on this planet and I tell you what, that in itself has changed my perspective on a number of things. So I decided to look after myself a little better, do a bit more exercise and have a little bit more adventure as well. This is the story about my longest single bike ride ever. There we are then, it's all official. I've been given my official bottle of Tuscany Trail wine, get that. God knows what I'm gonna do with that. Um, also I've got my little bag of tricks. Uh, there's a hat in there. Um, because I got in on the first, I can't remember, first few that were registered. I also got my Tuscany Trail shirt, jersey. So I should be wearing that tomorrow. So we're all done, all checked in, going back to the hotel now, it's a five, uh, six kilometre ride, and 122 metre climb. Anyway, there you go. Great, very exciting, it's fantastic atmosphere here. Buongiorno. Okay, so we're underway. 12 minutes in. <laughs> and it's already been a bitch of a climb, honestly. Uh, just up to the village. Uh, anyway, walked in. I mean, it was a 20 percenter. Um, anyway, the point is we are underway, finally. Started at exactly 8 o'clock, which was my plan. Um, weather forecast, they're saying a 60% probability of storms late morning, early afternoon. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. My plan is to ride at my pace, uh, but not to stop until I drop, basically. Um, power naps along the way, I'll give you more detail a little bit later on. Meantime. Uh, taking in the view. Well, actually there isn't a view here because it's all trees, but yeah, great fun. Atmosphere is fantastic. I mean, I must have seen, I don't know, 100 cyclists already, and I've only been cycling for 12, 13 minutes. Okay, ciao. Well, <laughs> I was going to do a report on the hour, but I was getting my teeth rattled out of the time. <laughs> Madness. Uh, I'll just start by saying this is absolutely fantastic. I don't know what I was expecting, but uh, absolutely wonderful. Ciao. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, what are we, an hour 20 minutes in, uh, three registered climbs, two unregistered climbs. Uh, probably half tarmac, half gravel. And the really surprising thing is, for me anyway, is that I'm guessing there are about two and a half thousand people setting off today on the Tuscany Trail. 
and you know you see people regularly but it's far far from busy um, yeah that which is which is great I mean it's just nice to see people every now and again I've just caught up with my first group I have to say on the whole I've been overtaken but I am pacing myself in a very particular way uh, to heart rate I'll tell you more about that later oh first finds look uh, so yeah a big smile on my face lovely temperature um, not too sunny so not too worried about that just fab here we go I hope the water's warm here I am in the middle of a river Well, it would seem that it was quite easy to ride through, but I've never done anything like that, so I wasn't going to risk it. Actually, the water's quite warm. Take a like. <laughs> Is that? <laughs> Well, the imagination of the route planners is, is mad. I mean, just totally mad. This is a standard Kona Rove. Uh, retails at 1,599. It's the 2023 model. Although I have to tell you that Kona in France did me one heck of a deal and I th must thank Stefan for the deal. Absolutely fantastic. And I love it. I mean, I really do love it. Uh, so what have we got? Let's look at the cockpit first and foremost. Um, I've gone for a set of aero bars. Everything I read said that this would give me lots of options um for comfort and certainly it's been an absolute boom just a cheap pair i can't even tell you what the brand is but they're not particularly uh, uh, expensive or well branded um uh, model um i've strapped my bike pump uh under the right hand bar i'm running a Carew hammerhead Carew 2 uh bike computer i've added a bar end mirror on the left hand side here I need to adjust that a little bit I've decided um, slung underneath the bars I've mounted two headlights my intention is to ride at night if conditions permit uh, I've mounted two feed bags here uh, they work really well quite pleased with how that sort of turned out a restrap race top uh, bag, um, frame bag here from Top Peak, and the same with the uh, rear bag. I've uh, put a cat eye uh, on the back uh, and a moon light. Uh, in fact, I think they're both moons. These I've, I've gone heavy on the back lights because, again, I expect to be riding, I'm hoping to ride at night. Even bought one of these really highly reflective uh, bands. I'm running three bottles. Uh, this is a toolkit. Obviously, two water bottles carrying 500 mil here, and on my in my jacket I carry two 300 uh, sorry 250 mil bottles as well. Uh, this is a standard bike, this is straight out of the box, except I changed the saddle. This is just happened to be a saddle I had around, it's a bit, a bit more gel and a bit more bounce in it. Uh, actually, that's really good. Uh, so, that is the bike. It's just... <laughs> it's just pretty crazy, really. Rivers, mud, gravel to knock your teeth out, climbs at 20%. Cypress driveways, just, just nuts, and we're two and a half hours in. Ciao, Cali. Come here, come here, andata. Come here, pedal after. 
People with bikinis on. Welcome to the Mediterranean. I'm not exactly sure where we are, to be honest, at the moment. I'm not really following the map, just following the route. And it's a lovely day. What's the temperature? Twenty degrees. That there is Elba, the island of Elba. First hiker bike for me. Two ramps of 16%. Bye bye. Bugger! That bike just gone around the corner. That's Connor Dunn from GCN. Wonder if I can catch him up. Ladies and gentlemen, the famous Connor Dunn of GCN having a pee. Well, <laughs> how's it Got going, go. Connor? Yes, yeah, good. How are you? Great stuff, mate. It's a cool route, isn't it? it absolutely fantastic. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's absolutely cool. Oh, nice one. Sweet. No, so, that's cool. Like, um, Tell me, it so far. You, you said on the, uh, GCN the other day that you were set for a specific time. What are you aiming at? So I'm trying to do it in two days. So when are you going to finish? Before midnight tomorrow. That's my aim as Is well. It? But that's nice a bit, one. yeah, that's mad uh, for me. It's not so much, it's not so mad for you, I don't yeah, think. Uh, I think it's going to be tough. Tomorrow's a lot of climbing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll see. Cool. But, um, but yeah, nice to meet you. And you, mate. Yeah, All yeah. the best. Enjoy. Enjoy the rest. Hope you get there by midnight. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So there you go, me and GCN, me and Connor, we're big mates now. <laughs> So apparently his strategy is the same or similar, let's say, to mine, um, in that he's aiming to finish by tomorrow night. I mean, I've just no idea whether that's possible for me at all. But so we're going to give it a go. We're feeling really good. We're four hours, 41 minutes into the ride. Average speed is good. Uh, feeling absolutely great, to be honest. Uh, obviously something of the atmosphere that's carrying me along as well. And, you know, meeting Connor and that sort of stuff. Yeah, just fantastic. Better look at the navigation. Lap 8, 30.06. Hard rate, 137. Love the aero bars. Really get comfortable position. Gives you a rest off your hands. Works really well. Right up ahead, that's a big storm cloud. I can see one off to the south, but uh, they're downwind of me, so I don't think that's going to bother me, fortunately. Famous last words, maybe. So all of a sudden, you turn the corner, you hear a rumble of thunder and things take on a different perspective really uh, 
see actually it's raining over there. I haven't really checked the course, but in theory we should be heading over there in a minute. Because uh, this is pretty much heading north, so I would be expecting to make an easterly turn soon. I don't know whether I'm getting closer to it or it's getting closer to me, but oh, the way it's happening, huge fork lightning just uh, happened. Well, this really isn't looking good uh, at all. Uh, this wind is literally just blowing up as I've turned the camera on. It's called the gust front. The, uh, that's put down by the QNIM, which is behind me. Anyway, I've decided that I'm going to carry on until I can't, basically. Uh, there's that gust front coming up. So the storm's right overhead, so a few of us have stopped in this little abandoned hut at the side of the road and found some bats in it. Well, the storm blew over. Probably had 20 or 30 minutes rest and just a little climb here 8 out of 10 another 2 to go stopping for a gel we're on to the second half of the uh, route that the organisers have given us so first one said 10 climbs <laughs> so I've just done the 11th climb which means I've only got 33 to go. <laughs> Look at that, under the Tuscan sun. Uh, it's coming up, it's exactly 7 p.m. And uh, I'm pretty tired. And one of the things I've realized is that I'm not cut out to be <laughs> a mountain biker. Uh, some of the trails that we've been riding are pretty uh, rough. I mean, it wouldn't. I don't think they're technical, but uh, with my less than perfect eyesight and some of the sort of shade, the dappled light, I've really struggled. So I think riding those trails in the dark, actually, even though I've got two really uh, high-end lights, I think would be borderline. Uh, crazy frankly so I've set myself a destination of Montalcino uh, which is 45 kilometers away I should get there probably 9 30 10 o'clock this evening uh, beautiful evening though and the storms are all ahead of me and away in the centre of Italy, so uh, coastline looks pretty good. Okay, and the armor. Well, they say that ever a good, every good ultra cyclist has a plan B. Well, I had a plan B. I'm not saying I am a good ultra cyclist my first time, but I had a plan B and it's all gone to cock, basically. I'd completely forgotten that it's Leroica in Montalcino tomorrow and as I mentioned, I was planning on really stopping there and getting a bed for the night, but the cheapest room 
Louise has been able to find is 750 euros for the night. Not going to spend that. So we're back to plan A, basically, which is cycle through the night. So um, I've just stopped to put my night gear on, basically, uh, jacket, change the glasses, uh, move everything around, uh, lights and all that sort of stuff. And uh, we're ready to go. So I'm going to carry on as much as I can, coming up to Montalcino in a few kilometres, then San Quirico, which I know quite well, actually. Uh, so my plan is probably to get to San Quirico and find a quiet doorway to slump in. <laughs> Should be fun. <laughs> we'll see what happens, anyway. The good news is, as you can probably see from this, actually, riding with these bike lights is, and I've only got one on at the moment, um, is actually much easier than is riding during the day because it shows up all the bumps in advance so i was worrying about nothing quite frankly uh so uh yeah well it's a very odd time to visit <laughs> time of day that is to visit your favorite vineyard chachi piccolomini d'aragon i've never seen it like this fantastic vineyard if you ever get the chance to come here they've got a marvelous uh bike museum would you believe uh, I've momentarily forgotten the name of this place. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Castiglione dell'Abate. So this is the monastery at Castiglione dell'Abate. You don't often see it like this. Well, I don't, anyway. Onward. Whoop, whoop. Well, this is a new experience. The problem with knowing an area is that you think to yourself, oh yeah, coming down this road again, hit that junction, turn left. Of course, what the sneaky bastards have done is they found a track, which I kind of guess parallels the, uh, the main road. So uh, I, it is a gravel event, I suppose. So I've not been down here, but I'm sort of familiar with the area. It's elevate. I wonder if they'd let me go and sleep in there. <laughs> the Abbot's here. One o'clock in the morning. I've just arrived in San Quirico. I was feeling knackered. I mean... So it's 5.30 in the morning and uh, I'm off again after a little bit of breakfast. Well there it is, the Tuscan sun. It's been up for about, I don't know, half an hour, 40 minutes, something like that. And it's stunning. So I didn't quite manage to do my uh, sunset to sunrise, but I was just shocked to be honest with you. There's absolutely no way I could have carried on today if I'd have carried on through the night, if you see what I mean. And even now I can really feel it in my legs. Uh, I've just done a climb. Mine it's 15%. Uh, and uh, I had to do a bit of hike about bike really. That's the first climb in the morning, so uh, maybe just a bit of a warm up. Anyway, steady away. It's going to be a beautiful day. I don't know about fields of gold, but these fields are just covered in these crimson plants. I mean, covered. Look at it. Magical. Not a mad person. <laughs> now that I can tell you.
is called Terapile. And that is where they filmed the famous gladiator scene uh, where he was riding down the track on bareback horse uh, to his home where he was hoping to rescue his wife and son. Terapile. This is the Val d'Orcia. Absolutely <laughs> stunning beyond stunning this morning. I have to say, I've cycled through here lots of times when I was a cycle guide. But this morning, never done it this time in the day. It's just incredible. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Ciao. 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 So, uh, we've just discovered that it's the Montalcino La Roica today. So, La Roica meets the Tuscany Trail. Buongiorno. Ciao. Grandi. Oh, Timo. Uh, yeah, wow. In fact, that's Montalcino you can just see over there. Ciao! Wow. That's Monte Amiata, the extinct volcano. And this is the Val d'Orcia. Uh, yeah, fantastic. And I've already passed hundreds of them. <laughs> Don't know what time this started. Mad. They're all on vintage bikes. If you don't know anything about Lerowica, look it up. They're all vintage bikes, and uh, yeah, that, that's crazy. Respect. Uh, feeling a bit tired. As you can see from that, that last climb is a bit of an SOB. We're in the Creta Sinesi. Uh, Siena's the next big stop in probably about 20, 25 kilometres time, something like that. Um, GPS is getting a bit low on battery, so I've stopped for a quick top up. Bloody thing let me down last night as well. Uh, I've got a um, Hammerhead Carew 2 and I did a lot of testing and research and what have you and it said basically you can turn it off and you turn it back on it would continue your ride, resume your ride and around about midnight last night I stopped at a petrol station just to uh, charge, charge it up again and um, powered it on, resume ride and then it just said failed to resume ride so all yesterday, I mean, 200 kilometres, just poof, gone. Fortunately, I've got a backup. Uh, my trusted uh, Garmin 4 and a 965. Thanks, Johnny, for the recommendation. And so I'm recording everything on that. I'm still routing everything off the, uh, um, off the um, Karoo. But, uh, yeah, it hasn't recorded the first half of my ride. Really beeped off about that one anyway so just taking a few minutes uh, rest um, in the shade it's quite sunny as you can see and uh, off we go again There we go, I've been able to see Sienna for a little while now, but there it is in the flesh. Sienna. 
Oh, Sienna. Oh no, wrong, wrong song. <laughs> So, let me share with you a little bit of my strategy. I'll put you out of misery. <laughs> it was all wrong. Uh, long story short, I bit off more than I could chew. But, so in the uh, beginning, I was looking at doing a four day ride. Basically 475 kilometers, roughly divided into four. Very doable, very achievable. My stretch goal based on that was three days. So, yeah, 150, 175 kilometers a day. Uh, but then, when was it now? 10 days ago-ish. I went out and did a 200k ride and I got back uh, with a good average speed like 18, 19 kilometers now nearly 20k if I remember rightly and uh, I felt really good almost felt like I could go around and do it again so that got me to thinking well Christoph Strasser uh -huh, and uh, many of those guys do rides overnight and one of the things I've kept reading about and seeing on YouTube and stuff is one of the most memorable things that you can do on these ultra bikepacking events is to cycle through the sunset and to the dawn so I thought well I'm probably not going to get another chance to do that so that was my goal, basically set off Saturday morning, eight o'clock there or thereabouts, cycle through Saturday night, get into the finish before Sunday midnight. Um, and up until about one o'clock this morning, uh, that was looking reasonable. Uh, was a bit slow, really a bit slower than I'd expected to be or wanted to be. But um, yeah, done roughly 200 kilometers uh, by the time I got one o'clock. I didn't get enough good quality rest, even though, um, yeah, you know, I, w I was, was resting. I just, yeah, it's just done me in basically. And I set off at 5.30 this morning with whatever that 240k to do today. Uh, so I'm going to fall well short. So I'm still going for the previous stretch goal, which will be three days, um, which will do no problem at all in actual fact. So really quite pleased with myself. If you don't know anything about Volterra, it is one of the sort of hidden or lesser known gems of uh, Tuscany, uh, founded on Etruscan foundations. That's sort of seven, eight hundred years BC. Wonderful. Here we are then, day three, good night's sleep, eight like a horse, <laughs> I'm still bloody hungry, and today's a leisure day really, um, so I've decided I'm going to take my own route back to the finish, always wanted to go to Bulgari, and so that's where the famous Sasakaya wine comes from, so actually I'm going to go that way, um, I've I won't say achieved my goal, but I kind of know what my limits are. Um, so I don't feel it necessary to go and beat myself up again today. I've already done that. Uh, so going for a nice descent down into the valley. Now to the seaside via a bottle of wine. And why not? 
So this is the Etruscan gate. I'm not sure I can actually film this as I'm riding through because I need both hands on the bars. But anyway, that's what it looks like. How fab is that? And very roughly, I'm heading over there somewhere. Still about 500 metres of climbing to do today. Fantastic views up here, love this. So I've definitely decided that I'm a road cyclist, not a gravelly, dirty graveler. <laughs> and this is why. Absolutely love this. Hairpins. Woohoo! scent riding down here is just overwhelming there are so many wild flowers out at the moment so many cyclists on this route as well I'm not sure the camera really picks up the vibrancy of the colors but just fantastic So fitness, well, I started a program that I sort of created, I was going to say designed myself, pretty much on the 1st of April, so it gave me about two months. Um, I think I had a reasonably good base of fitness to start with, but, you know, how do you measure that, I guess. Um, and so I used an indoor trainer, thanks to Magnetic Days Jarvis, I love that machine um, and I also bought a book by I think his name's Stefan Barth it's called bike packing and ultra cycling and it's quite technical so I designed myself uh, a program around that um, which basically went base fit base fitness development and then there was a sort of recovery rest period in between and then did, uh, specific training which was distance training did my first hundred miler my first 200 kilometer ride etc so all of that worked pretty well really then the second one is food ciao uh, second one was food and feeding and so during those long rides I sort of train myself uh, what to eat, how to eat. Basically, I set myself a lap alarm every 20 minutes on my Karoo and uh, just ate carbohydrates. If anybody had told me that I could just eat sweet things every 20 minutes if I rode my bike, I think I'd have done it years ago. Just fantastic. So, uh, that's quite interesting to study that sort of subject. Tempo, and this is probably the key one, is what that interprets as is heart rate. So, essentially I've been trying to ride in zone two or lower, but honestly, you know, some of these climbs, the weight of the bike, <laughs> you just can't keep it in that. I mean, you really can't. But overall, the, the issue is, or your challenge is, to keep your heart rate low. That's what it's all about. So even when it's banging up 150, 160, just watching the clock, watching the road ahead, dropping it down to the base gear, and really just real steady pedaling. And that's what really managed, uh, enabled me to 
to carry on really quite frankly uh, and then pace I, I I set myself a goal which was <laughs> looking back on it was ludicrous really uh, I reckon I could complete the whole course in 40 hours within 40 hours not 40 hours cycling uh, but frankly it was too um, too ambitious but anyway go big or go home as they say um, but that was my second stretch goal if you like uh, my original goal was to do things in three days which is actually uh, what I've done my original stretch goal that is so three days is what I've done hello hand on heart I've decided that I'm cutting the third day short um, and that's because actually I don't like gravel I am a roadie <laughs> I've decided <laughs> don't want to be a dirty gravel biker that's off to them because uh, I've never I now realize I've never done a proper gravel ride before Jesus Christ that's so much harder than road cycling so hats off to the guys but uh, yeah wonderful wonderful experience uh, I'll do a full analysis when I get back that's amore amore bells will ring ting-a-ling-a-ling vita bella lucky fella that's how I feel here we go then the end so that's just about 400 kilometers in 52 hours uh, I didn't do the full route but I'm not complaining at all that's a fantastic experience um, truly made up that there's nobody here <laughs> going on fab So, that's it then, all done and dusted. Um, takeaways, if you are a hairy arsed dirty gravel bike rider and you haven't heard of the Tuscany Trail or you want something different to do you must come and do this it is just fantastic I mean it really it's a tough event no question of it uh, but it will take you to some of the main highlights that Tuscany has to offer uh, not to mention just the people just wonderful I mean Italians I think are fantastic anyway but I'm slightly biased uh, so the whole thing definitely recommend it I've met people uh, like Connor uh, on super expensive bikes. He was on a Kenyan, I think it was, with uh, Colnago um, set up on there. Through to my bike, which basically was brand new, but uh, I got a deal from Kono. It cost me a thousand euros, basically. So the kit doesn't really matter, if you like. Uh, as long as it's capable of doing it, you need a gravel bike, maybe hardtail mountain bike, something like that would also suffice. Um, and I met other people like a family, uh, husband and son, son had brought the girlfriend, husband had brought the wife, and they were taking like, I don't know, seven, seven or eight days to do the whole thing. Most people, it seems, taken about four days, and if I was to do this again, then I would probably want to do it with uh, a few other people and do it um, over four days. Do it as a sightseeing thing. If 
like me, you like personal challenges, then you can do that, which is what Connor was doing, and I'm nowhere comparing myself to him. But, um, you know, I set this out as a personal challenge. Um, it was a bit of a stretch goal. I didn't quite make that, but I certainly busted a few records of my own and had a great adventure. So, highly recommend it. Um, I'll sit down and think about a bit more of the analysis, if you like, and I'll maybe tag that on to the end of the video. Otherwise, that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Do sign up for next year's Tuscany Trial. And if I can help you prepare in any way, shape or form, let me know. Ciao. I'm dreaming in dreams Bigger than me Taking my time Giving to me Paint my life into a masterpiece